you would, I can draw your attention real quickly to the board. Um, our job today is to analyze the development of the central ideas and concepts over the course of the text being 12 years of slave. I'm going to expect you to talk about where these concepts first come in to play in the book, and then, of course, talk about how they develop. So if you would please go ahead and take out your questions, your double journal entry, and your notes from the beginning of the week. What our focus is, we've been working on this all week, making sure that we're all staying on topic. We're focusing on those central ideas and concepts that were presented by Northrop to tell his story. Once again, we want to then connect that to the actual purpose of the book. Can someone so just a quick review. Um, we will have 15 minute circles with one minute critiques. You have already been assigned your partners. Okay, so while you are um, following the circle, make sure you're thinking about things you can tell your partner that's constructive. Um, our inner circle, you need 15 talking points. Remember there are different ways you can do that. You can ask a question that's worth one point. You can make relative statements, those are worth three, but if you do happen to say something profound, you know that is then worth five points. Okay, our outer circle. You guys are also responsible for 15 talking points. Your talking points will be through a back channel discussion today. Um, if you would, please use your computers and go ahead and go to todaysmeet.com forward slash McBroom fourth, or sorry, four, not fourth. Okay, you guys are critiquing the circle as a whole and maybe giving some pointers to your partner as well throughout the discussion. Um, remember, we do have a hot seat next to our leader, Victoria. If outer circle members want to say something, they know this is the place you come. Please make sure you don't make it a hot potato seat. Okay? Lastly, constructive criticism, and we will wrap up with a self-assessment after both circles go. The concept of the, uh, the inherent dignity of all humanity, um, where does this first come into play in, in the novel? Like, what makes him believe that he's a human and he just deserves dignity right off the bat? We all believe that, right? Yeah, well, I mean, he was a free man. Like, that, it's not like he was born with the rest of the slaves, and the slaves, the, the slaves, uh, they were told that, you know, you're not human, you're livestock. Him, on the other hand, he was free. He knows that he has rights, and that he's an actual person, not just some livestock they are used to. So you're so you think it's like, just, it comes with being what you're born with, like, whatever you're surrounded by? I mean, yeah, if you're taught one thing, like if you grow up thinking that, I don't know, like if you grow up thinking the sun isn't yellow, it's green, then that's what you'll think. You'll know, you'll think the sun is green. The same way if, you, if you're if you born thinking you're livestock, then you'll think you're livestock unless you're like. Wait. Uh, um, I would like to say that the dignity part really comes in when he meets the slaves. Because when he's a free man and he looks at the slaves, you know, he looks down upon them as being ignorant to how life is in the north but um, when he goes down to the south and he actually meets these people you know realizes that they are also human beings just like him and the same can be said to the north they're ignorant to how the um, south was at the time so like things like Uncle Tom's Cabin in this book like really helped the abolition movement in the north by bringing awareness to that slaves were also people knowing about how life really was is what uh, is the reason why he never gave up hope of regaining freedom and he resisted the dehumanization of enslavement and that's like what's in the whole book because he knew how things were supposed to be and they weren't anywhere near what they were supposed to be in the South. I agree. He knew how life should have been and not how it was in the South because he had a taste for that. And the slaves of the South never had that, so they couldn't rebel because they knew nothing of liberty. I feel like um, Northrop, he felt like everyone was born with dignity, but he felt like he, once he went down there, he realized that they were stripped of their dignity. I like that he, like he didn't put them at fault for not seeing that. He knew that once you raised that way, it was just simply no change again unless there was a big, big change. I'm kind of stuck on what Chris said about how um, Northrop saw how the South wasn't doing what they should do. Is it? I feel like you can't really compare like what they should because Northrop learned something different than what the South learned. Because the South was kind of thought this is their niche, this is what their this is their role in the world. Yeah. 
Then do you think their role has something to do with possibly um, their religion? That's another concept that's uh, portrayed in the novel. It's, it's like how uh, before he was really nice to his slaves because he was, he was a religious man. He went on Sunday and tried to start reading to his slaves. And uh, I, think, I think religion played a big part into it. Um, like Epps, Epps uh, decided that the Bible says a man shall do whatever he wills from his property. So he saw these slaves as his property, so he found it best to beat them and treat them horribly. And then there was also, I think it was Tanner who saw that slavery was a biblical thing, that they had a right to hold slaves and have them. Well, another thing that plays into it, like he talks about labor often, and he has a certain understanding of like the nature of work and the development of work ethic. And like he compares the relations of employees and employers in the North to the slaves and the masters in the South and how it affects the quality of productivity and things. Like, and they were brought up that way. If you were brought up to think this is how it's done, that's what you're gonna think. That's how it's done. It's kind of back to kind of back to how like Chad was saying, like if you're brought up thinking that the sun's like green then that's how you're going to think of it. I mean, it's like, it's just how you're brought up and how you're born into it. A good example of that would be Epps' son in the field. Yep. How he, he was sitting out there at a work slave sometimes and he didn't know that he was walking tall and broad out there. Yeah. And I was proud to see his son yeah, following him. Well, yeah. using all slave owners is a big generalization and not all slave owners were cruel. It was. It's kind of like people with animals. Like if you have a pet dog, you don't really, you're just taught that it's insignificant and it doesn't really have feeling and that it's just kind of like a non-existent thing. It's just there for your own enjoyment. People take that in different ways. So some people find it fun to just beat on it and then some people care for it and nurture it. And it just goes by individual slave holders. And they didn't see the slaves as people, like they saw them as animals. Okay. I guess it made it easier for them to like mistreat them if they don't think of them as people. Because like, okay. they wouldn't mis mistreat their family or their friends. They detached the idea of humanity from the African Americans. Another, um, another reason why was probably, this is of course a problem, mm -hmm. can't, I'm sure, but another reason why the problem mostly is were brutally mistreated because it was money. Uh, uh, one of the biggest influences of human nature is, of course, money and uh, some other stuff. But money is one of the biggest ones. And slavery was extremely important solely on the economy of the South. Without slavery, the uh, South's economy would have crashed way earlier. I mean, the humanitarian point on this story. Well, actually, slavery had started dying out at some point, and then some northerners decided, oh, I'm going to end in the congen, and that just reboosted slavery. So it wasn't like at some point, slavery did start to die out, and then it just kind of restarted, and then the South became dependent on cotton. I feel like slavery was like their way to make a living because of how they made money. So they did this, they made money, they kept like what they had intact, so if they did anything to keep their way away from the right Well, sure. to the issue of money with slaves, if slaves were, were worth a whole lot of money, why were a lot of them mistreated and beaten and abused? Because the more, it's kind of like a car. If you're constantly going to beat it down and break it, it's eventually just going to go out and die. And if something's worth that money, why do you want to lose it? Why don't you want to actually try to take care of it to where it can be more money for you in the long run? Well, I think it depends on the slave owner because most people could care less about how they treat things. Like, some people could have a brand new car and they don't care if they keep hitting and hitting and hitting it. It's their property, so it really depends on the slave owner. A lot of the points it wasn't really the slave owner. It was the overseers, like the other black men who were put in charge of the slaves. They just they felt as if they needed to backlash on their own kind. They just needed to feel the power because they had been vulnerable for the majority of their lives as slaves. Um, now, um, we've been talking about the dehumanization of slaves, uh, which is the blank uh, dehumanization in the novel. 
But did anyone pick up on the subliminal uh, dehumanization of this is name starts with an A? Uh, he also kicked cotton. He was a white guy. He was a drunkard. Amber. Uh, Am Ambers. I think so. Something Ambers. Like I can't remember exactly. But uh, Ambers. Ambers. Something like. But anyway, um, whenever, whenever Solomon was caught writing his letter, um, well, he wasn't exactly caught writing his letter. He was caught on the way back, and uh, he's asking him. He's like, "Why?" So I got uh, a slave that can write and read. He's like, um, "No, I don't have anyone to write to." He lied. And then it was just so easy for Epps to believe uh, Northrop because he was a drunk. So it was kind of like he threw away all of his um, <coughs> humans because for, you, you were taking into consideration a human's thoughts. But he's just like, oh, this guy is drunk. He, he's done away with all of his credibility. So it's a, lot like of, a lot of the time you look at, it goes through ignorance. Like in the beginning, how Northrop uh, when he uh, when he gets kidnapped, I mean, a lot of free black people in the North would live in fear of kidnappers, and he seems to be impervious to like the possibilities that he might be targeted, and but like he never, it never crosses his mind that like to join the circus, it would be you know like that he might be getting kidnapped. He just is obviously in, like just clueless about the danger in the North. And, I'm just like the time period they're in, it's kind of like almost like, an, like you're waiting for it to kind of like an adjustment maybe? Well, it really all goes back to money because whenever he, uh, he got kidnapped, he was looking for work, and that's when those two guys came in and kidnapped him. It wasn't that he was impervious to the dangers, he was just desperate for the money. I think he completely was impervious to the dangers because whenever he was going to a slave state, he didn't even consider, oh, I should get a free paper. He's like, oh, it's not going to happen to me. He didn't even think of the possibility of him getting taken. That's what I'm saying. It ties into a lot. Well, back to what Tommy said, like, money will drive people crazy. Like, people will do anything for money. Like, pretty much the whole conversation we're having is, like, based on money because that just, that decides how you're going to treat your slaves. That's going to decide like how much work is going to get done, like it's just the main point of this. Um, and you know, once again on uh, subliminal dehumanization, do you think that money was a factor in taking the slavers' humanity away? I mean, obviously it did because they, they go beat them because they felt like the money was worth, they felt like they needed to get their money's worth. So they went and put money so. in the yeah. But, yeah, um, Beat them to make an example out of them to produce productivity as a whole. I mean, like we keep talking about dehumanization, dehumanization, but these people are humans, of course. They have free will, which is another reason why, like, they're probably so brutally mistreated because they have this free will. And if they felt like, hey, I'm not going to do work today, you know, you were beaten, and that but was like a. A lot of the time as they were brought up into it, they didn't really feel as if they were human, so they didn't really understand the concept of dehumanization. They just thought this is how things work for everyone except for their master. Okay, another very nice discussion going on. Let's go ahead and get with our partner for our one minute critique and then please go back to your seat for our fun portion of the day. <laughs> Best possible rating. One, of course, is the opposite of the perspective. 